Myslím, že to bylo dobrý. Se to odmítni. Right, everybody. Uh, welcome to the last talk of the day, excluding lightning talks. And welcome, Lukáš. So uh, thanks for coming. It's a little bit light, and uh, you you are uh, I'm believe that uh, you you would like to be uh, in a pub uh, at this point. Uh, so I will uh, make it uh, make it uh, quick, hopefully. Uh, I would like to welcome you on a on a session about Node.js. It will be a gentle introduction, which is uh, slightly biased to uh, to Java devs, uh, but I promise, uh, uh, if you uh, even if you don't know anything about uh, about Java, you will you will get. Uh, uh, something for it. Uh, my name is uh, Lukáš Fritsch, and uh, I have uh, I have like uh, three years, uh, three years long experience with uh, with Node.js, uh, but I'm writing JavaScript for like 15 years already. So uh, so uh, I may I may tell you a lot of a lot of interesting things from uh, Java uh, Java land uh, today. Uh, first. Uh, First, uh, I will I will tell you what's uh, Node.js about and what what it is uh, what it's not about, uh, and we will dive into a few things that uh, you will you will definitely uh, face uh, when uh, when uh, you will uh, you will first encounter uh, Node.js uh, programming and uh, and those things are uh, uh, event loop and asynchronous uh, workflows. Uh, then we will a uh, little bit dive into parallelization uh, of Node.js programs, and we will also uh, uh, look into how to make our programs uh, um, uh, modular. I will compare a bit, bit of Java, uh, some, some uh, simple constructs uh, that uh, Java people or Java crowd usually uh, are looking for in uh, JavaScript and Node.js specifically. Uh, we'll look a bit into trans transpilation, but uh, but really fast. Uh, 40 minutes is not, not that enough. And I will also mention a few tools that you are uh, you will find useful when when pro programming in uh, in uh, this land. Uh, but first, let's start. Uh, what's actually Node Node about? Uh, first, let me declare Node.js is not not any any language. It uh, uses uh, just uh, ECMAScript as we as we know it uh, from uh, from uh, browsers. And it's also not any any framework. Uh, you won't find any framework stuff in a, in a Node.js. Uh, basically, base um, Node.js APIs are that low level that we can we can really treat it as the uh, as the framework. But it's a platform. It's a, a runtime and and a platform uh, with a lot of a lot of extensions that you can uh, you can uh, leverage. If uh, we want to compare the concepts. We know uh, the, the the language of uh, of Java is of course Java language. The the language of uh, JavaScript is uh, uh, of Node.js is JavaScript. Uh, we run Java on a Java virtual machine, uh, while uh, Node.js is powered by V8, which is the Google Scrum um, virtual machine. Um, then we have Java Development Kit, and we can compare it to Node.js uh, standard standard uh, modules. Uh, basically. Uh, basically, uh, that, that's it. If you would like to start with Node.js, uh, just go to no, Node.js.org and uh, download the latest stable 5.5 uh, 5. 5 version. Or uh, if, you are, if you want to run it in production, let's go to long-term support, uh, which, which is, I believe, uh, two years uh, long, uh, which, is, which is still, still pretty, uh, pretty good. Uh, then Node.js is uh, first encounter with Node.js will be uh, when uh, when going to uh, to the shell, 
and using uh, using uh, tools like Node. Uh, I'm not personally downloading the, the distribution of Node.js directly. I'm using the, uh, the Node version manager, which I really encourage you to use, because uh, if you are switching between a uh, version a lot, then, uh, then it will uh, come very handy. So I may switch or install versions uh, very, uh, very simply. Uh, so basic tools are Node, uh, which is basically the, the interpreter of uh, dynamic, uh, dynamic language. So, um, hello. Good. And the second tool which uh, you will definitely use is a node package manager, which, is, uh, which, is, uh, which can be compared to Maven. Uh, that's the, basically the, the package manager, the, the dependency manager. Uh, which comes with uh, some standard, sorry, standard uh, workflows. So uh, with npm we can uh, initialize new new project. Uh, I will just go with uh, defaults and. Now we have uh, package JSON. Now, if we want to install something like probably most uh, uh, um, most most used uh, module, uh, which is which is Express, we will just save it to package JSON. And now, if we look to the package JSON, we, you will see that uh, uh, we got uh, one new uh, one new dependency. It's, uh, it's really that, that simple, uh, that simple uh, and fast. Uh, the the node uh, application will basically uh, uh, look for the main main script, which is not here. So we would have to uh, create it, and we could run it, but it will of course do nothing. So yeah, basic work workflow. Uh, the most most basic APIs we can use in Node. You can see that. Uh, I hope you can see. Uh, if you will list the uh, Node API documentation, you, in, you will see that all of them are really low level. Nothing that you could just just use. Uh, for example, HTTP HTTP module is something we could simply compare to uh, to Java Java servlets. Uh, however, the the real the real power of Node.js doesn't come from the uh, runtime uh, itself. It uh, it uh, comes from the from the number of packages, the plethora of packages. Uh, the, the npm npm repository is actually uh, the the package repository which has most uh, most packages in comparison to any other uh, language platform runtime uh, whatever. Uh, so on npmjs.com you can uh, you can uh, find uh, new packages for uh, for uh, for example let's say if we want to use uh, promises. Uh, which I will show later. Uh, I can find some pop, 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 sorry, popular module here, uh, like Express or Browserify. That's cool. So you will. That, that's probably the uh, the entry point for uh, all, uh, all all the reusable uh, modules. Uh, but you may ask me why I should leave when considering you are a Java developer, why you should leave the, your safe place, the, the Java land, it's type safe, you know, uh, what can actually uh, JavaScript uh, give me? And uh, if I'm considering myself, uh, the, the best thing on, on uh, JavaScript is that it's everywhere. It started with browsers, and uh, I, I may tell you that you can imagine 15 years ago, uh, the JavaScript really, really sucked, but uh, nowadays uh, it is that powerful that uh, it, it can uh, simply uh, power the mobile applications uh, and very complex uh, applications like, like Gmail on, on browsers. And of course we have it already on, on a server. And that actually enabled uh, JavaScript developers uh, the, the perfect uh, match uh, that uh, they can develop uh, all the uh, all the client applications, and they are writing in the in the same language. That's something I was looking for on Java for years, and and uh, I couldn't find find it even even though I was uh, I was using uh, GWT and so on. It didn't feel right. But uh, writing in the same language that's uh, that's 
just so powerful. And also a new superstar at that point were, were born. It was, uh, it's called uh, Full Stack Developer. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's the guy which uh, doesn't care whether uh, he writes uh, the, the client or, or server. There is no, no more distinction. Uh, you are just writing both and, and uh, you, are, you are proactive uh, in, in both lands. But uh, uh, client and server uh, applications uh, is not all, uh, of course, of course, JavaScript uh, is in IoT land, and for Java people, uh, it's on uh, JVM as well. You can run it as uh, Vertex, as Nodein. Uh, you can use uh, you can use uh, sorry Nashorn, Dyn.js. Uh, there are so many projects built ar around running uh, no uh, sorry um, JavaScript on uh, JVM or even uh, Node on NVM. Uh, one uh, one note to that. Uh, even though we have uh, Node on JVM, uh, there is still, you, you can't still run uh, all modules that you will find in an MP, uh, NPM repository on a Node, uh, on a Node on uh, JVM because uh, there, is the there are the uh, native bindings uh, that, uh, that uses uh, C++ uh, low-level low API, so uh, that's why that, that will never be that simple, but still you can use just, uh, just uh, one language, but uh, what really makes uh, Node.js so different that that it may be that hard to uh, to um, learn uh, for uh, for a lot of people? The the single most uh, interesting and important thing to to uh, learn when uh, you are you are going to JavaScript uh, is actually um, learning about uh, event loop. Event loop uh, is basically a single thread. Uh, Node.js, uh, every time Node.js runs just in a, a single thread, which is, which is perfect because you don't, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to uh, address any, any synchronization or, or anything, anything like that. Uh, if you want to communicate with other programs, you just use uh, message passing. Uh, so you run, you run in uh, one thread, uh, but how, how it could scale when you, when you uh, run in one, uh, in one thread? Uh, the basic idea of Node.js is that uh, the most uh, time-consuming uh, things uh, are actually I.O. It's from receiving requests to, to sending requests to reading file system. Uh, every I.O. So is uh, so time-consuming that, uh, that uh, every such operation, Node.js wants, uh, wants to delegate to Threadpool, uh, which will basically uh, operate all the all the time-consuming operations, and this uh, single thread is just for our business logic. And, uh, and uh, it, it was proven that, that our business logic is usually that, that simple, uh, just some ifs and, uh, you know, uh, it's so simple that uh, we can serve so many requests just in uh, one single thread. So uh, what happens when, uh, when we have some, for example, uh, uh, requests, uh, we, we want to request something um, on some REST API, uh, and at that point, uh, the, the, uh, um, at that point in a, in a program, we will basically uh, fire a request to the, uh, to the uh, thread pool, and uh, we will, uh, uh, the, the state of the, uh, the, st uh, the state of the scopes will be remembered, and uh, now it's on non uh, non blocking uh, lib lib uh, uv uh, to handle uh, that that request. And once uh, once it's processed, it will basically come to the event queue, which uh, which uh, uh, the single thread uses as a source for a new new uh, logic. So it's basically every time spinning uh, spinning. Uh, uh, thread which which uh, uh, just uh, fires even to the thread pool and then waits for uh, for the result uh, to, to process them. So it's uh, it's non-blocking. Uh, it's highly asynchronous. Uh, so it's uh, uh, it's pretty it's pretty uh, performant. Uh, if you still can't 
get around it. I, I hope it, uh, it's clear from the previous uh, image. But uh, let's, uh, let's just uh, remember that uh, it's like comparison of your fa uh, favorite, uh, favorite uh, uh, fast food when if you, if you go to the drive-thru, you will just go here and order, and you don't wait for a response. You, do, you, go, you go here, uh, uh, you will pay, and um, once you pay, uh, you go to the, to the last window and uh, you get your, your uh, result. Uh, but in traditional Java multithreading, uh, it's like this. You are standing in the queues and you are waiting for the thread to be, to be uh, cleaned up, uh, uh, the, to, to clean up the, the uh, last, uh, last work uh, in order to, uh, to process some, uh, some new uh, orders. But it also comes with some trade-off that we also have to have language constructs uh, that uh, enables us to to do uh, to write uh, programs uh, effectively, and I think a lo lot of confusion and a lot of um, sort of hatred about JavaScript comes from uh, or no no JS come from uh, the concept which is call callbacks or or uh, sometimes uh, airbags. Uh, sometimes Java crowd just tweets about callback hell. And I will show you. I will show you why. So basic basic idea is that uh, we are using uh, callbacks. Uh, if we want to uh, to get something from a, from a request, then we just describe what what we want, and now we pass the uh, callback. That callback always uh, by convention starts with uh, error uh, object or web error uh, variable. Uh, so, uh, if if the if the response will be error now error news, uh, then then uh, this error will be actually uh, not null. So, what we can do if if this function has a contract that uh, the the callback is passed as well, so we just propagate the callback uh, more, and otherwise we will parse uh, parse the body. It's uh, it's pretty obvious. But let's uh, look at. Uh, a not that simple uh, application. I have uh, prepared here uh, an application uh, which is uh, Express. Uh, Express is uh, pretty, it's like industry standard for writing Node.js uh, REST uh, routes, and uh, there is just uh, simplest possible, probably uh, API, which just uh, uh, which just returns. Um, uh, empty JSON. Uh, here you can see that uh, we have one root called data, and it's uh, it's get. And if we want to change the post, we will just do this. Uh, it's uh, that simple. And then we use some middleware, and then that middleware is actually error handler. Error handler. We can identify that by uh, this first parameter error. So uh, if some error happens here. Uh, we can pro propagate it to the to the uh, error handler here, and uh, it will just you, uh, use the default uh, default error handler, uh, where if there is some message, it will it will uh, return it. If not, it will it will create one. And at the end, we we listen on some uh, on some port. Uh, it's still simple. So let's look for a little bit a uh, little bit uh, harder. Uh, Example: uh, We have the same endpoint, uh, but uh, we want to do more here. We want to uh, request data from two endpoints, and then merge the result and provide it uh, to the uh, to the user. Uh, and uh, we want also uh, leverage uh, cache if uh, if uh, the the request bar bar uh, successful. So. Um, now we uh, we start request processing here. Request response and next handler. Uh, we use uh, Redis for for caching. So uh, do we have anything in a, in a Redis cache? Um, if there are cache data, we will just uh, send them to the user. If if not, we will create an object that we will uh, want to fill. So we will fire two uh, two requests. And uh, one is to our Java old backend application, and uh, another one is to the uh, third-party 
uh, third-party API. We want to match those results and uh, send them, for example, to our uh, mo mobile devices. So again, there are callbacks because these two are uh, asynchronous operations. Uh, if there is error, we will handle it. If not, we will we will uh, fill in the, the data, uh, the, the parse data. Uh, we also want to uh, get rid of some confidential information from uh, from the response of our Java backend, and then at the end we have uh, we have to try to to respond because uh, uh, we don't know which one of these will uh, respond first. So we are we are basically uh, waiting for both of them, and once uh, both of them are filled, we will respond and then uh, try to cache. Uh, cache uh, the information uh, or, or the, the response we had, we had got. Uh, let me just quickly show you how we can uh, debug this. And I have to switch uh, from uh, presentation view. Actually, to, just to run, is, uh, run it, I will, I will run it. It's listening. Uh, so I will show you that I can um, not watch, but... Uh, I can retrieve some data. So in order to debug this, I will uh, add there some breakpoints. And to understand asyn asynchronicity, uh, we, will, we, will use, uh, we will use these uh, breakpoints. So uh, we are listening again. Let's fire a request. And we hit uh, the first. What? Okay, sure. Uh, we hit a second, second breakpoint, and then now we actually got a response from the from the uh, application, and uh, uh, we got a response from the second endpoint, and now they try to it respond. And that's it. We we got a response. Yeah, but that's that's not that uh, that powerful. In order to handle the asynchronicity much better, uh, something which is a language construct in ECMAScript six uh, called Promises uh, was uh, was invented. And uh, Promises is uh, basically um, uh, called uh, a continuous uh, passing flow uh, pattern where uh, once the first promise resolves. Uh, the second promise, uh, which is uh, which is in uh, in uh, uh, which is defined or registered by a then handler, uh, will be will be called. Can do something with data, uh, and then will be uh, called uh, once once it is handled uh, asynchronously. The, the first then, and then the second then will be handled. And if anywhere in this flow uh, something happens, the, the last uh, error handler will be uh, will be called. So we can we can uh, rather write something like this. Uh, we all have function retrieve uh, third-party third data, uh, and uh, when we know that uh, this uh, API uh, uh, request is also returning promise, then we can say that uh, let's request it, le then, then parse it. Uh, you can see that JavaScript is a functional language. We are treating uh, functions uh, like JSON parse as a, as a first-class citizen. Uh, and uh, so at the end, our pro programs uh, finally look a little bit more readable than just uh, with, uh, with uh, callbacks. So typically, uh, what I may do in my, um, in my API is uh, logging start, uh, which will probably be a deb a debug log, uh, then uh, retrieve the data, uh, set it uh, into, the, into the cache, then, uh, then log the request, uh, and uh, handle error. Uh, very very re readable. Uh, let me let me put here the second example, which is which is using promises. I will make it bigger again. So uh, now you can see it should be it should be more re uh, readable. So let's uh, let's take uh, let's take uh, the the handler function. The handler function will call get data, which is promise. Uh, the promise uh, again uses some promise get cached value. Uh, then, if there is some cached value, uh, I will directly return. return. Uh, so uh, here we are returning value, but 
uh, if we don't have it, we will return promise instead. And, uh, and uh, if we are returning promise, then uh, the another handler will wait until until we have the result. So you can see that we are returning the, either the value or the, the promise. And after the data are retrieved, we save them to the cache. So you can we can reason about this pretty well, right? Uh, this is this is pretty pretty nicely written workflow of uh, of our uh, of our API. So and uh, if we are using it uh, on a high level, we just say let's get me data, and if there are data, uh, respond respond them. Uh, you can see that we are using another ECMAScript six feature, which uh, which is uh, arrow far, uh, arrow function. Uh, it's uh, com we can compare it to lambdas in Java. And if there is error, we'll, we will just pass the next. The next has uh, the API that uh, we just pass their error. So we can just pass next, and uh, it will handle errors uh, automatically. Uh, another promise-based API is uh, promise all, where we can retrieve, uh, retrieve uh, all, uh, where we say, uh, let's wait for both of these functions to wait, and then process them. Uh, the processing uh, goes in the way that uh, here is another uh, ECMAScript feature, which is uh, array deconstruction. Uh, we know that we will get uh, array from, uh, from this promise all because we have two results. We can automatically assign them to the array, uh, array um, variables. And uh, here is another feature, which is, uh, which is object, uh, simplified object uh, construction. So this one will basically uh, take those two parameters and uh, store them under, under the uh, object uh, fields, which are called backend data and third-party third data. Uh, just if we are using some APIs that aren't uh, written in a, in a promise way, uh, for example, our, uh, Redis cache doesn't, uh, isn't exposed that way, we can use uh, libraries like Bluebird, Blue, Bluebird uh, which allows us to call promise, promisify all on the, on the object, and it will basically take uh, all, the, all the methods uh, defined or functions defined on that object and wrap them in a, a function name uh, async pattern. So you can see get async and set async, and it basically returns, uh, returns promises. Uh, so just just so that you you will you would believe me, let's uh, run it again. I will run it uh, with Nodemon. Nodemon is nice tool for uh, in order to um, not not spend time reloading uh, the application uh, all the time. You can run Nodemon, and the address is still in use. Why it is still in use? Uh, because I still run it here. Uh, view. Exit and kill this. Good. So now you can see if I do some change here. For example, I will leave it to uh, listen of 5050. Mm, it's uh, constantly reload. I'm passing one uh, one uh, one parameter here. It's a uh, uh, it's a harmony uh, destruction uh, thing, uh, which is. Uh, which is the flag which, uh, which uh, provide me with some features that are uh, still in, uh, they are defined in a, in a, uh, in a spec, but the spec, uh, specs are usually finalized yet, but uh, still uh, they, they aren't uh, stable in, in Chrome in V8, so uh, that's why I can enable them with a uh, Harmony uh, flag. For example, the, the array feature I have shown you before. It's if it is still, uh, sorry, uh, uh, you can see a little bit of analogy between the Java util concurrent future and, and promises, if you, if you want. However, if it's still not enough for you to, to think about or reason about asynchronous logic, then, then uh, you should wait to ECMAScript 7, which will basically allow us to uh, uh, use async await API, where uh, it is uh, compatible with promises. So this async function is basically promise, or we can use it as a promise. We could uh, call the respond, uh, respond then. And here I am using await. The await will basically mean that uh, I'm waiting for uh, some, uh, some blocking uh, operation, uh, or uh, I will basically um, 
uh, suspend the uh, uh, suspend the computation, and uh, the um, the nice consequence is that in uh, such written um, snippet, I can I can actually use try catch uh, finally as I would in in any any other in any other uh, logic. Uh, just let me go uh, quickly uh, to parallelization. Uh, so parallelization is as simple as, as this. You will just run it so many times with parameters like port, or you can use Docker, of course. Uh, nothing surprising, but if you want to go more low level, you can, you can actually spawn more, more processes. Uh, but that's still not what we would like to use in a server-side applications. So that's why Node has a cluster, uh, cluster module. Cluster module is something which, uh, um, it's a module which allows you to fork the, the process, uh, for example, as many times as you have uh, uh, computer units. And uh, then uh, it will basically rerun our, our snippet. So we have, a, we have a flag here, which is called is master and is worker. And we basically know in, in, in where we currently, in where we current, currently run. Uh, the master process or, or the process itself, the cluster module basically listens on, on uh, that port. And it uses a round robin to go around on all the workers that we have, uh, we have spawned. So if we would run this on my machine, we would uh, see uh, we would see that we have uh, four processes uh, uh, and uh, all of them can handle 80, 81 port. Uh, it's not very nice um, code to read, so uh, we have invented, uh, we have invented, uh, in, we have written a small library, uh, Fee Henry Cluster, that helps, uh, helps us to uh, write uh, microservices just in a way where, where, we, where we use Express API and uh, it's much more uh, easier, uh, easier to, uh, to read. Modularity. So you could, you could probably already, uh, already notice how, how Node.js modules are written. Uh, the, basic, uh, the basic API is uh, require some module name. Uh, either the, the global module here or, or uh, the one installed in a node modules directory, or you can use, uh, you can use, um, you can use a relative, uh, re relative uh, uh, path to, to, to module. And uh, this is one of the APIs that is blocking because uh, that require has to uh, block uh, until the, the uh, module is uh, created. So uh, if, we, uh, if we have this, uh, we, we require some modules and then we want to expose some module functionality so we can depend on it. We can use uh, module exports and pass the objects uh, uh, which will be uh, exposed to the, uh, to the outside. Okay, so for packaging, we use npm to install anything. Uh, we use uh, we use nvm for switching versions. But uh, let me talk a bit about uh, about uh, versioning. Uh, versioning may be may be tricky, uh, however, pretty nicely solved. If we go to package JSON, we will see that our dependencies were installed with, uh, with some, some of these patterns. Uh, we have uh, carrot, carrot, and uh, version. What does it mean? So basically, Node uses uh, semantic versioning. So anything which starts with zero is not stable, and you should not depend on it. Uh, I can tell you that uh, at this point, uh, most of the standard modules that, that I use are in uh, stable mode. They are one, one point anything or, or more, uh, which is surprising. Well, like uh, when I was uh, installing some, uh, some project uh, last time, I have noticed that all of the dependencies are one point something, and I, I was pretty confused. It never have happened before. Uh, however, uh, in Node.js, in package.json, we can specify ranges. These ranges uh, are basically uh, uh, pretty, pretty self-describing. Self however, if you use tilde, you basically say that you want this version and any uh, other uh, minor version like non-API breaking um, version here. Uh, if you use tilde, that's the same. You just, uh, uh, you, uh, you just say that you, uh, you want uh, one point anything. Uh, the 
uh, the carrot doesn't uh, doesn't work the same way uh, with uh, zero version, non-stable versions. If you specify it this way, then it means that uh, that uh, the because the API may be unstable, it can change in whatever version uh, author wants. So then then uh, zero uh, zero uh, something will basically stay the same. The node uh, won't try to reinstall it. Um, just quickly, when you are installing the, the dependencies uh, in, a, in a node, you have two, uh, two ways how to, how to uh, look at uh, the dependencies. You can either check uh, node modules to, uh, to GitHub, or to GitHub, to, to Git, Git repository, uh, which is not nice to your, to your source. So you can use npm shrink web. npm shrink web is basically uh, the, the npm, NPM um, command, which will, which will write a nice JSON full of information, and it will basically describe everything you have installed uh, with, uh, with npm uh, into the node modules uh, folder. Let me uh, try it, for example, here. Uh, npm shrink wrap on my test I have created uh, previously, and it will do this. Now, if we have this, uh, this descriptor in this folder, it will uh, basically use it. If you, if you write, uh, oh, sorry, uh, I'm using another display. Yeah. Uh, again, test uh, npm shrink wrap and cat npm shrink wrap JSON. It will now use the npm shrink wrap if I write npm install instead of my package JSON. Right? Good. So for Javaist, uh, so for, for Javaist, uh, we have classes in uh, in ECMAScript six. I I wouldn't use them as much. I would just I I wouldn't use them that much as you do do in Java. Use other patterns. I will show you some books where if you are in, really in, interested in in uh, JavaScript, then let's don't. Don't use classes that much. People, uh, people in open source com community will love you. Dependency injection is possible. For example, in uh, in alternative uh, uh, asynchronous uh, module loading uh, or the definition um, strategy, you basically can describe the the name of the modules uh, we use, and and then they will be passed into the function. Or similarly, in in Angular, we can we can, uh, uh, Angular just parses the, the parameters of the function in order to get the names of the, uh, the variables defined, and it will use the name to, to inject my dependency. So uh, something which starts with dollar is uh, the, the system Angular dependency usually, uh, while this my logger is, is something uh, I, have, I have defined. Reflection is much simpler. Reflection is just about uh, uh, just about iteration over the properties in, 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 the, in the object. While proxies, proxies were added in uh, ECMAScript 6, but uh, not much, uh, not much implementation, uh, implementations implement them at, the, at this point, but they are, they are pretty comparable to what we have in Java. What about Java EE? Uh, if we compare to Java EE, I may tell that from my experience, it's, it's, it's much faster to write uh, write Express applications uh, than than Java EE, but uh, but obviously there are there are an, uh, analogous uh, APIs we can uh, we can leverage. Uh, also, configuration is usually uh, driven uh, programmatically, uh, and it's it's much better than bloated uh, bloated uh, XMLs, right? Uh, or for example. Handling uh, asynchronous uh, asynchronous calls is also pretty easy in Java E latest versions. However, I still like promises more. If you still are not happy about how JavaScript looks like, you can do a little little bit more Python way, which I don't admire anyhow. But you can do that, obviously. Uh, you just need to do some translation before before you uh, run your program. Uh, I'm much more in favor in getting a little bit type safe uh, using uh, type safe interfaces uh, like with uh, TypeScript. So uh, just at the end, uh, let me let me 
Doki what we have already uh, already seen. So uh, Node Node.js application uh, uh, are usually written or that they, they start uh, that fast that we can use something like uh, Node Node monitor, which will restart our application uh, every uh, every time the the source is uh, is changed. So it starts in in seconds. Uh, so it means uh, it means uh, it is really really fast for uh, re redeployment. Say. Uh, you can use whatever IDE. I prefer WebStorm. It has a really nice uh, code completion. It's quite clever. Uh, sometimes, if you call your method like get, it it can reason about it, about it. But if you if you are clever about it and use uh, meaningful um, method names, then then you are you are safe. But you can use, you can use Vim, Notepad. You can use uh, even Emacs or, or something like that. Uh, debuggers. Uh, there are uh, Chrome Chrome DevTools, uh, specially optimized for for uh, no, uh, no JS, which you can use familiar browser uh, debugging things. Uh, but uh, last thing I would say, uh, because I'm out of time. Uh, be sure to use uh, something like ESLint or J JS Hint or anything like that because uh, because JavaScript is uh, sometimes tricky, so uh, it is better to use uh, some static code analysis. And it is always good to uh, use uh, test runners. For example, the one I have here is that good that uh, it reruns every time I, I change the application. So I will just show you uh, if I run watch. Right. I would have to change it, but uh, if if I run test, it will basically run test in a, in, a, in a second. So let me just recommend last thing: uh, some books. Some uh, some of them are new, some of them um, are are older. But be sure be sure to to read about JavaScript before you start to use it. It's it it can be applied to to anything, but uh, you will be so happy when you when you find uh, yourself writing uh, pretty pretty nice code and uh, the code which you can uh, reason about so yeah that's it I, I hope that uh, it was a nice interaction for you and uh, I, I certainly uh, uh, welcome you to to Node.js community now uh, I want to see more github modules uh, in npm re registered uh, each day okay. Thank, Thank you, you Lukash. Unfortunately, we don't have time for questions. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have time for questions for the whole room, but you can always speak to Lukash. Um, just a reminder, lightning talks will be in the D section. Um, thanks for coming today. <laughs>